Hi there Booktube, it's Roz and I'm here with a scally dandling video and I'm going to talk about My Duros by Emilita Keeling and she is an author from uh, the Federated States of Micronesia. Now, if you've watched my channel before, um, you'll know that the scally dandling videos I do are where I talk about books that are not from like the USA and the UK, but, you know, further afield from my background and my experience. And quite often they're books that I've read as part of my sort of ongoing personal challenge project um, to try and read something by an author from every country in the world. So, obviously... Very excited and happy to read a book from the Federated States of Micronesia. And I have to thank um, Teresa from Wisconsin, who sent me this book. And we did like a, she's she's got a similar project in hand. And we did a little exchange and I sent her Mema, um, a book from Gabon, which I hope she um, enjoys as much as I did. Because this is the only book available from um my, by a micronesian author um in english so um i'm thrilled thrilled to have read it we usually start these scally dandling videos by working just checking that where the country in question is and um micronesia is an area of a sort of like a archipelago or multiple archipelagos really of islands um in the in the pacific um and they kind of it kind of starts all here sort of just beyond the philippines and sort of it's this area here across sort of above above new guinea um stretching across but not as far across as hawaii um and sort of uh, above and to the west of um, Polynesia. Um, does that give you a rough idea? I hope so. I mean, it's um, it, it's a sort of huge um, oceanic area. Within that um, are a number of different sort of states, countries, you know, so so if you imagine it's about 2,000 islands spread, spread over thousands of miles of, of, of sea and um, some of them are, or well, there's states like Palau and Nauru and the Marshall Islands um, and then there's um, uh, others that are part, basically belong to the USA, like Guam, say, um, and Whereas the Federated States of Mic Micronesia is about 600 islands. Um, they're a mix of kind of coral atolls and more mountainous, you know, they've got mangrove swamps, they're tropical. Um, they've got a lot of sort of different individual island or groups of islands, sort of cultures and languages and so on. Um, now, Micronesia was there was a sort of ancient very ancient indigenous population but but the the people that that, that now live there that we consider the micronesians kind of came across in waves as amazing waves of s extraordinary seafarers um that um populated or you know in, moved in and inhabited micronesia and polynesia and so on and from about 3000 BC up to about 1500 very roughly and 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 coming from the Philippines and other parts of sort of uh, Southeast Asia it's all um you know a bit lost in the midst of midst of time but you know we know they were very innovative navigators and 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 seafarers had established themselves in in all these islands the Europeans first passed through in the 16th century and um, the area, most of what's now um, the Federated States of Micronesia, became part of the Spanish um, Overseas Empire. And um, in, in, then in 1899, the Spanish basically sold it to Germany. First World War, the Japanese kind of take control of the area. And then after the Second World War, the Americans do. So it's only relatively recently that um, 
any of the islands have kind of established some kind of independence. The Federated States of Micronesia was kind of formed in 1979 and then sort of got independence in 1986, recognised as stated by the United Nations in 1990. But it 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 came into being whilst making, um, now I've got to get the, the, the name for this right, a, a compact of free association with the USA. What that means is that although it's an independent country, the Federation States of Micronesia, those 600 islands, it's very much under US influence um, and residents of those islands can um, move to the US without needing to sort of go through sort of immigration processes. They can um, they can be signed up into the US Army, the US control the defense of the area. The economy is predominantly sort of subsistence farming apart from um, a sort of diaspora sending money back um, from um, living in the United States or, or being in the army or, or going to like Hawaii or Guam or other sort of American-controlled um, uh, islands. So it's, it's, and that is very key to this book because this is, this is quite a, this is a book of quite political poetry. Um, let's say a little bit about um, Emiletta Keeling. So she is she must be in her 40s now I think I, I don't know her date of birth she was born on Guam because her parents happened to be living there at the time but her father was from um, Pompeii which is one of the sort of main islands in in Federated States of Micronesia or F FSM it's called for short and um, but her mother is um, a white woman and she was sort of working as an ethnographer in the area and then you know settled um having having um married Keeling's father and they she moved back to um and grew up on um the island of Pompeii and um although she's at, at times lived in Hawaii and New Zealand and Guam and so on but you know she's she considers herself Pompeii and has spent most of her life there and that's where she grew up she obviously is um, has a very strong interest in Pompeian uh, culture and tradition and language, and she pours that into this book of poetry. Now, oh, the, one of the things that you you no doubt are wondering because I immediately wondered is what are euros? You know, the book is called My Euros. Euros are the skirts. Um, the traditional skirts worn by Pompeian women, um, they're highly decorated with embroidery or applique. Um, they have a long tradition, but they're still very current. You know, they're sort of modern versions. They're, um, they reflect the key role that women in Pompeii had in textile um, making. And uh, I'd say that Kileng is embracing those as sort of symbolic of um, Pompeian culture and a sort of traditional but continuing Pompeian culture that she considers to be hers and is celebrating um, but not in an uncritical way and that's what I'd say about this being quite a political book in that she's um, she looks, I suppose, at Pompeii with the ideas, with the eyes of an insider, but also an outsider because she's sp spent time elsewhere. She she writes about um, uh, angrily about sort of apathy and alcoholism, um, but in 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 the islands now. But she also writes about the diaspora and about how um, people from the Federated States of Micronesia are exploited. Um, when they go to work in Hawaii or in the States or in Guam and so on. She she um, she writes about when she was teaching at the um, uh, the College of Micronesia, so like the sort of, yeah, further and higher education college there, um, and she was teaching English, English as a second language and um, kind of recognised that she was almost like a, an agent of, 
colonialism in 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 doing that um she yeah it's quite they're quite passionate poems they're not all brilliantly written i would say um but they're the context and content is fascinating i'm I, i'm going to give you a little example of the sort of um uh, political kind of um twist to some of the poems this one is called no post in colonialism at com com being um the college of micronesia okay so they say it's a trait they don't have here they are not thorough they can't copy a sentence they don't eat green stuff vegetables because they say it's pig's food it's pitiful. It's hopeless, they say. They can have some yokel dokel ding dong to do it on teaching developmental English courses. It's different in the real world, they like to say. So she's um, expressing her frustration, I suppose, about how um, the College of Mi even though it's the College of Micronesia, it sort of fails to recognise um, and is patronising about um, actual you know, Pompeian or Micronesian um, kind of culture and people and behaviour. She does, um, she, she's very much, I suppose, exploring her own identity in the poems. And um, Pompeii is a matrilineal um, culture and your your clan that you belong to comes through your mother. So having a white mother means that she's, kind of excluded from that although she is considers herself um, Pompeian so um, one of the most intriguing poems in the book for me was one where she she writes about that and she writes about the sort of the the uh, kind of like town or area where she grew up um, the 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 clan ancestral animal is the eel um, but as I say, she can't claim that because her mother's not from there and her father's actually, his clan is is another one that whose, whose ancestral animal is, is is the rat. So so she writes about um, uh, a poem called To Swim With Eels. Um, and uh, I could have been eaten then, taken to the mouth of the river. The other part of me is empty with no animals to call family. Whiteness mistaken for nothingness. I swim with Lassialap girls and their ancestors who lurked behind rocks and was never afraid. Although I could have been eaten then, taken to the mouth of the river. I've heard of children in Kitty who swim with sacred eels in freshwater pools and streams, never to be bit. That's just an excerpt of that one, but that I found very interesting as an idea. Some of the poems, I've said that, you know, some of them are angry and some of them are, are political. Some of them are more kind of celebratory, like celebratory of her, celebratory of her lovely relationship with her, her father's mother, her grandmother that comes to live with them. Um, one thing she does in these poems is she uses lots of Pompeian words, words from the Pompeian language, which is very enriching and lovely, but they're not always translated properly so that it's a bit exclusive I suppose for um, uh, a writer of my background uh, a reader of my background um, coming to this book that sometimes the sound is lovely and you kind of get what's going on but you I would really have appreciated perhaps a glossary at the back so I could really check that I would understood everything. I would say that these poems are not uh, their fascination is in being, you know, the first book of Micronesian poetry published in English, um, which is tremendous. Oh, that I think is that 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 cover is lovely, isn't it? It it that's a, a modern um, Euro skirt um, design fabric, um, and all of that that ri that richness is is tremendous pleasure of the poetry, but. You sh you wouldn't I wouldn't recommend them for someone who's looking for absolute kind of stunningly first rate poetry. Um, you know, not that they're bad, but they're not extraordinary in that sense. But they are extraordinary in terms of the the culture and the ideas that they express. <laughs>